Welcome to Nomad Media Automotive Tales, where we tell vehicle stories, a little bit of history, and some unique personal experiences. Let's get right into it. So today we have Joel Herring with his 1967 Harley Davidson FLH and his, we also have him here with his 2012 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic. Man, these are some really cool bikes and when I came out to see your bike collection, I was not expecting to see a sidecar out here. That's something that you don't really see every day or ever, <laughs> but it's really cool to see that. Um, and I appreciate you having me out here to talk about the stories on both of these bikes. So with that being said, how about we get right into it? We'll start with the 67 up here. Okay, the 1967, I purchased it roughly around 30 years ago. I got it from a lady that her husband had passed away. She wanted to sell. Her son had contacted me because he had got word of my interest in them. Went to uh, look at what she had this one took my interest, and we discussed a price on it. She made it known to me that many of his friends did not really seem concerned with his death as much as they seemed concerned with what he had. Ooh, that's not that's not a good way to be. Like uh, that's pretty low for your friends, but you know, continue. I'm sorry. Yes, it mean. could be. Yeah. She agreed to a price that she would sell it to me for and actually told me that she was pricing it lower than what she could have got for it. But for that reason I just stated, we agreed on a price that I was happy with and she was happy with. Mm -hmm. So I purchased it, brought it home, I pulled it to the shop, hadn't run in about five years, got it running, Took it down the road I live on a couple of times, pulled it back in the shop, stripped it down to the frame, and began working on it. Took me a few years to get it where I've got it today. Mm -hmm. But I'm well pleased with it. I recently bought the sidecar as an addition to it because I've always had an interest in them. Mm -hmm. And it's a project, but it's a labor of love, I guess I'd say. Man, it's it's a cool project nonetheless. Like uh, you pointed some things out to me. You got a little bit of body work on it to do, and uh, yes, it, it seems to be minor, but uh, it's going to take a little while. It's you know this is this part is new to me, so it's a learning process for me. Where'd you find this car? At? Why, where'd you find this? I car? went to North Carolina yep. to pick it up. I found it on Marketplace and. Uh, once I saw it and saw the pictures of it and contacted the fellow that had it, and he said, well, I've got somebody looking at it, but, uh, you know, it's pending. I said, well, please let me know if you don't sell it, because I'm very interested. Well, about two days later, he messaged me. He said, it's available. Hmm. So I contacted my buddy, and we made a trip up there and back, about a thousand miles round trip, and picked it up and brought it back. It's amazing what you can find on Marketplace yes. these days. Uh, Sidecars, like I've already mentioned, like I was not expecting to see one when I pulled up here today. Um, quite literally the only sidecars I think I've ever seen. Now, granted, I guess this would be considered a classic bike at this point. Yes. But, uh, yes. you know, granted it's still going on a classic, but for someone that doesn't know bikes as well as he knows cars or something like that, it's, I look at this bike and I'm like, this is something that I would ride. Like, this is a really good looking bike and I would not know it is 50 years old. Yeah. You know, I would never yeah. know this is 50 years old if you mm -hmm. didn't tell me. And the sidecar is like, the only bikes I've ever seen sidecars on are museum pieces. But, uh, like, I think I've seen some at the Athens Square when they had a big show up at the Athens Square and they had a bunch of bikes up there. But these are like, pre-war car or pre-war bikes so it's like you know they look like 
bicycles essentially, but with a sidecar and it's uh so thinking about this going on to this, it's like that blows my mind. I think is one of the coolest things ever too. Like I mean <laughs> that not really needing to be said, but I think it's just cool as crap that you you have a the coolest thing ever that you have a sidecar. Well, I've always had an interest in them. I always thought I would like to try and see if, if something would maintain my interest. Uh, I believe it will. Mm -hmm. uh, my dog might be happy. She might be tickled <laughs> to get a ride in it when I get it completed. But that's the main thing for me is just something to do, something, a project. And, uh, you know, of course, I get it set up right. I'll take it to a few shows, do some rides on it locally. and. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you mentioned to me, this isn't your long trip motorcycle. Like that's what the the ultra classic is that's for. That's correct. So I, I have taken long trips on this one, but it's been a while. And mm -hmm. what I what I travel like that now, I've got something a lot more comfortable. Right. So this this would probably be more of a you know, God forbid, a trailer queen when it goes to the big shows. Yeah, like but, Daytona or something of that nature. But, you know, when it's a local thing, you'll you'll take it. Yeah. You'll just ride it then. Yes. It's not, it's a run and driving bike. It's yes, just, it is a run and driving bike. And it's not the most comfortable you have in your yeah. arsenal here, though. Well, to be honest, it's pretty comfortable for what it is. I said the most comfortable. <laughs> I said the most comfortable. Uh, and right. I'm talking about what you have. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, there's a difference. There's definitely a difference. Uh, but I've been riding them all my life. It was a passion of mine I never could get away from. Right. And I like the cars too, but you know, the bikes have, have been my number one passion, I guess, throughout. I'm going to have years. to come back at some point in time and talk to you about the cars too. So okay. definitely stay tuned if you like old Joel here because, like, uh, <laughs> He's got a nice car. Not going to spoil it for you, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's something right here you can look at that might spoil it a little <laughs> bit for you, if you can see it. But, sorry, back on the bikes, though, you know. Um, it, this this one's cool. This was just, this blows my mind, like, not being a bike guy. But uh, let's move into your other bike here and get some of these stories, too. Like So this one, you say, is your cruiser. So you've driven this one around a lot further than this one's probably went. And um, I think you mentioned the mileage, which I don't quite recall. Uh, I've got around 77,000 miles on it. It had 27,000 on it when I bought it. So you and, definitely uh, put your miles on this bike. I, yes, I've done more than one cross country trip on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did 5,300 miles on them last year, me, my son, and a couple of my friends. And that was a good trip. In 2020, we went up the East Coast, and that was during the pandemic situation. So that was a kind of a story in itself as to what we run into on that trip. Kind of hard to find a place to stay, mm -hmm. food to eat, things of that nature. But we went all the way up to Maine and then cut back down across New York into Ohio and back home from there, which was about half the trip we intended on doing, but because of the situation, we cut it short and decided to reschedule when things settled down. What were some of the things you were running into during well, that time? Because, like, I mean, when you're on a bike, it's like, it's just you. Well, for it? one thing, for instance, we got into the state of Massachusetts, and we had to turn around and backtrack to Rhode Island to even find a place to stay for the night. We were going to spend the night in Massachusetts, but you could not stay there during that time unless you was an essential worker or you was willing to quarantine for 14 days. So, so we, we run the into that, you know, here and there, and that's that kind of put a damper on the trip because we were seeing some beautiful country and mm -hmm. so forth. Come across the Chesapeake Bay and all that. And, Virginia Beach. What would you, on the Chesapeake Bay, I hear that from time to time. Uh, what is that view like? like? Well, it's really indescribable. You know, you're, you're going across that bridge and then you're in a tunnel and then you're back on the bridge and then you're in a tunnel again. So that's a different experience. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was, it was, 
It was a lot exciting. Of... I guess the word <laughs> I'm looking for. It was exciting. We enjoyed that, and uh, I've been across that twice on the motorcycle. And, did you uh, uh, Did you ever finish this trip out, or has it? Is it still on hiatus right now? Well, uh, yeah, but really, the the finale to the trip was last year. Mm-hmm. But we did take some different routes from the original intended route. But this time we cut down into Louisiana, across South Texas, back up into New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, back across to Sturgis. I've been to Sturgis quite a few times. It was the first time I'd been in a few years, but that in itself is some of the most beautiful country you can ever see. They, they probably didn't give you too much uh, headache about your uh about having to have this number. No, not after. at this time. That was not a problem. And that, that makes all the difference in the world. Oh, yeah. Makes it's, all the difference in the world. So, Well, uh, what about uh, anything you've done? Like, So you mentioned Daytona with this one a few times. Like, You've been to Daytona on the Ultra Classic? I've been to Daytona line? on this one. Or Ultra Classic? Uh, on the Ultra Classic, back uh, two years ago, we went down to Daytona, not my first time, but just one of many. And this time my son went with me. I had a uh, another Harley, fat boy, that he could ride. And he's, he's ridden motorcycles with me all his life, but he's, his passion is music. But this time he went on the trip with us and uh, Done very well. I was a little apprehensive, you know, as your son, you're going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, just wondering, well, hopefully nothing will go wrong. And it didn't. He wrote it like a champ. You know, he, he really surprised me how well he wrote it, how careful he is. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got down to Daytona. This old 67 will be his someday. But at that point, we was in Daytona, and he was talking about how much he liked the bike he was riding. And I said, well, his name is Christian. I said, if you really like riding and you want to get into riding like I always have, you need to be on something that you know you can depend on. He agreed with me on that. Well, we got down there and he got to talking. He got carrying on about he really liked the bike. So at that point, I made the decision to let him have the bike, and it's his now. And uh, he loves it. Still drives it? He still drives it. He loves it. He they, went, they he went on a trip last year with us out <laughs> west, cross country. He's been to Daytona on it twice with me. And uh, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. He's, he's, I couldn't ask for a better son, and I've got two daughters. I couldn't ask for better daughters also. But... Uh, I'm glad to see him take up the passion that I've had all my life. and uh, But uh, I don't want him to get away from his music because <laughs> he's good. He's very good at it. So so uh, what's his name and everything? So if, if anybody's interested in checking out some of his music. He is Christian Herring. And uh, he's a guitar player. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the best. So uh, he he's... Uh, been playing music. He's 26 years old. He's been playing guitar since he was about 10, and he didn't get it from me. <laughs> he uh, he picked it up and run with it, and uh, and that was that. I'm not saying it because he's my son, but he's extremely good. Man, that's really awesome. How about we get to hearing these two beautiful bikes roaring? You know, let's get them crunk up. Sure.
have it. That's Joel Heron's 1967 Harley Davidson FLH and his 2012 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic. Um, man, these are some beautiful pieces of machinery. I can't wait to see the sidecar on the side of this bike. Like this is going to be so cool. Um, but these things are nice as is. And thank you so much for having me out here to talk to me about your motorcycles. Um, is there anything you would like to say to anyone that might be watching this video? Well, I appreciate your time. And if you don't know anything about motorcycles, try it. You won't regret it. And you know, that's, that is awesome because like when people don't know something about it, trying new things, they tend to like them. But man, thanks for having me out here once again. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Next car show, okay? All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.